Hello, my name is Belinda and I work for Canadian Blood Services in Lethbridge. Here at the Lethbridge Clinic, we need over 1,600 people every month to book appointments to keep up with patient demand. And including in that number is 200 new donors. I'm here to ask everyone across the country of Canada to consider donating blood. Most people say they don't donate because they've never been asked. So I am personally asking you if you've never donated before, please book an appointment. In that time frame, you're trying blood donation and you're saving lives. 52% of us have said that us or someone we loved have needed blood in this lifetime and only 4% of our Canadian population donates. We get it. We deal with the two ickiest things. Nobody likes blood and needles. But the minute you're going to get over that fear is when someone you love needs blood. Your mother, your dad, your daughter, your son. Here in the Lethbridge Clinic in February, we still have over 600 open appointments that we need to fill. And we love having partnerships with organizations like Alberta Health Services. Please consider donating and book an appointment by either downloading our app, Give Blood, or booking online at blood.ca. Hi, I'm Conra Mueller. I'm the Transfusion Safety Tech 2 for South Zone at Alberta Health Services. Canadian Blood Services provides blood to us in the hospital. So they divide it into different parts for us and our job is to determine what the best product is for the patient depending on what they need at the time. So remembering that blood is actually a living fluid full of cells, so it's, it's almost like a liquid transplant sometimes with finding a compatible product for a patient. So the most common product you'll probably see is if you've ever gotten blood in the hospital or known somebody who did, that's not actually blood you're getting, that's red blood cells. Those are just the cells that carry hemoglobin around and transport oxygen throughout your body. So patients who get red blood cells might be patients who are bleeding, um, either an acute bleed, like someone who's been in a car crash or just had surgery, or a hemorrhage after delivering a baby. And it can also be a slow chronic bleed, so some patients who you know, they might be bleeding somewhere in their body and we haven't, uh, the doctor hasn't had time to diagnose it or treat it yet. Sometimes those patients need some extra help with red cells um, if iron therapy isn't enough for them to keep their levels up to help them keep oxygen through all the tissues in their body. So we'll find the most appropriate red cell unit for those patients. We also have some patients who can't make enough of their own blood. Um, patients might have disorder, for example, such as thalassemia, where they don't make the right type of blood and they need uh, donations from, our, from the blood bank in order to keep their ability to um, keep their oxygen levels up. So those are some of the most common situations we use red cells for. We can also give patients plasma. That's actually the liquid part of your blood. You've got proteins in there, clotting factors, um, there's some antibodies in there. And that's really the liquid part that helps you form the clot in your body. So we can give plasma to patients uh, who are bleeding. Uh, if we keep topping them up with red cells, we might dilute out their ability to clot. So we can give them some extra plasma for that. Um, we can also give it to patients who are maybe on certain anticoagulants and need some help uh, get, getting some of their clotting factors back before or after surgery. And then the other products we use commonly are platelets and these are tiny little cells that float through your body looking for holes to plug. So if you've got an injury, the platelets will gather along that hole and, and plug it for you so you stop bleeding. So much like red cells, we can give platelets to a patient who is bleeding and maybe they're bleeding so bad that they've used up all their own platelets or sometimes plate patients can't make enough platelets. So patients sometimes when they're going through chemotherapy for cancer, they can't make their own platelet cells. So we give them routine platelet transfusions to help keep their levels up and to keep them from bleeding in the first place. And then there's also a whole host of other products that can be made from blood. A common one you might think of is IVIG. That's basically antibodies from all sorts of donors pooled together. So for patients who either don't make enough of their own antibodies and we need to give them extra so that they don't get sick, or sometimes it can help um, to suppress the immune system a bit when a patient has an autoimmune type of disorder, they can get IVIG for that. 
And then there's other products, other proteins that come from blood, um, clotting factors, for example, for hemophilia patients, those all are made from blood. So the, the thing with blood products is that we can't just make more. If we don't have a consistent supply of donors, we don't have a, enough supply in the hospital to treat patients who, who really do need it. So we rely on Canadian Blood Services to make sure that they're providing us enough products so that we can treat our patients.